Thank you, Mr Speaker. With permission, I will group this with questions 15 and 23. These small boat crossings are dangerous, as the tragic fatalities last month showed. They are illegally facilitated by reckless criminals, and they are totally unnecessary because France is a safe country with a well-functioning asylum system where people can seek protection if they need it. We are determined to completely stop these crossings. We are working with the French authorities to prevent embarkations. We are considering action we might take at sea, and we're taking robust law enforcement action, leading so far this year to nearly 100 arrests. And in fact, just last week, two people were convicted and sentenced for facilitating these illegal crossings. Just before I bring in Michael Fabrican, my numbers are seven, eight and nine. I, I, I presume that's right. And in the meantime, I will now go over to Lidgefield with Michael Fabricant. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, my honourable friend actually answered the question that I was going to ask. So I'm going to ask him something else instead. Why does he think, and we've all been shocked by the number of deaths on the channel, why does he think people actually want to leave France? <laughs> well, I must try and be diplomatic in the way that I answer that question. Um, but I mean, there, are, there are a variety of motives which probably include things like language. But the simple truth is that if people are seeking protection, then France has a fully functioning asylum system. It is a safe and civilised country, and there is no reason and no excuse to attempt this crossing. And that is why anyone in need of protection should avail themselves of it by claiming asylum in France and not attempting this dangerous crossing. We now come to Damien Collins. Mr Speaker, as the Minister knows, this problem is getting worse throughout this year. Uh, we're seeing tragic loss of life, concern for communities on the Channel Coast uh, because of this problem as well, and it's profiting people trafficking gangs. What progress is being made, either with stopping more of these crossings leaving France in the first place, or stopping boats at sea and returning them to the French coast? If the migrants can see they can't get into the country in this way, I think fewer of them will try. Well, the Honourable Member for Folkestone is quite right to point out that this uh, trade is facilitated by dangerous uh, criminals, dangerous and ruthless criminals. Uh, in terms of activity with the French, uh, we are working with them to prevent embarkations. We're funding uh, gendarmes who patrol the beaches. And in fact, the French authorities have successfully stopped uh, nearly 5,000 crossings this year so far. In relation to action at sea, that is something which we are in the process of actively investigating. Because as the Honourable Member says, if it's obvious that nobody can actually make it across, then they will stop attempting these dangerous crossings in the first place. We are also working to return people who do get across under Dublin regulations. And in fact, this week there are three flights, uh, some of which contain returns uh, of uh, cross-channel migrants under the Dublin regulations. So by a combination of law enforcement on French beaches, potentially in the future action at sea, and returns, we can remove the reason to even try these crossings in the first place. Tracy. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister agree that the best way to actually clamp down on these illegal crossings is stopping the small boats that are carrying the illegal immigrants in the first place from ever leaving European shores? And can he confirm to the House what uh, steps he's taken with his French counterparts to ensure that they're stepping up their actions in this respect? Well, my honourable friend is absolutely right. We need to do more with our French colleagues to prevent the embarkations. As I say, we're funding now additional gendarmes to prevent embarkations from the beaches and we're also supporting the French to provide uh, proper accommodation, safe accommodation, for migrants who would otherwise be living in the various camps. Uh, action at sea is also something which we are investigating, and he's quite right. If we can render these crossings essentially impossible, nobody will attempt them in the first place, which is the right thing from a health and safety point of view, but it's also the right thing to do to undermine and prevent the ruthless criminal gangs who are behind these crossings. Let's head up to Scotland with SNP spokesperson Joanna Churry. Joanna Thank you. Um, can I start by extending my sympathies to the relatives and friends of all who've died attempting these crossings? Uh, as a matter of international law, entering a state to seek asylum without a visa is not illegal, and I'm happy to share the UN High Commission for Refugees' advice on this matter with the Minister. But certainly these crossings are most irregular and they're very unsafe. 
rather than fanning the flames of people's desperation for political reasons, wouldn't the minister be better to focus on creating safe legal routes for asylum seekers? And while he's attending to that, could he encourage the Home Secretary to stop her anti-lawyer rhetoric and acknowledge that there is a responsibility on politicians and other public figures to avoid saying anything that could make tensions worse or put people's lives at risk? Well, firstly, in relation to Article 31 of the Refugee Convention that I think the Honourable Lady and the Learned Lady was referring to, it makes clear that the, uh, the prohibition on criminalisation of entry only applies to people who are directly, I use the word directly, entering a state from somewhere which is unsafe. And I would respectfully point out that France is not unsafe. France is a safe country. In relation to her question about safe and legal routes, there are a large number of safe and legal routes. Around about half of people who claim here, come here to claim asylum do so already via legal routes, in addition to which we, are, we have for the last five years been running the resettlement programme, taking people directly from conflict zones, for example Syria, and bringing them to the United Kingdom. Over that five-year period, 25,000 people, half of whom are children, have come via this resettlement route. This resettlement route, this safe and legal route, of the kind that she calls for, is the largest resettlement programme of any European country. We have a proud record of supporting people in genuine need, and we will continue to do so. In relation to her last question, uh, of course I completely support the Home Secretary, and we will continue to fight vexatious, last-minute legal claims where appropriate to do so.